Thank you for joining us for Japan Foundation Turing Film Program's Associated Talk. My name is Junko Takekawa, Senior Arts Program Officer of Japan Foundation London, and I'm responsible for the programming content. Many of Japanese films included in the Japan Foundation Turing Film Program this year featured young people exploring issues of social mobility, loneliness, sense of self-doubt, and despair. The program's main focus wasn't youth, and it was just coincidence, but it demonstrated that issues surrounding contemporary young people and their state of mind are a great inspiration source for filmmakers in Japan. I am therefore delighted to welcome Yoshino Ryohei, the di film director of Eternally Younger Than Those Idiots which was screened as part of Japan Foundation Touring Film Program 2022, a great Japanese film and one of my favorite titles to talk about film and his views on young people. Thank you for making such a wonderful film as well as for your time today. Normally, as part of our film program, we only invite filmmakers and ask them to talk about their films but today, we also have another special guest, Tsumura Kikuko, the author of the, uh, the book Eternally Younger Than Those Idiots, which, uh, which that film of the same title is based on. As some of you may remember, Tsumura Sensei was a guest of last year's Cheltenham Literature Festival, and we are honored to host her talk. Welcome back, and thank you for your joining us this time again. We have never done such a joint talk with the filmmakers and also together, despite that there are many Japanese films adapted from contemporary literature. And therefore, this will be my dream combination of speakers to look into one work, but from different perspectives. The conversation will be led by Dr. Irene Gonzalez Lopez, a lecturer at Barbeck, uh, Barbeck College, University of London. I know she is one of those audience members who was touched by the, the great greatness of film, and then I look forward to hearing an interesting conversation. This event is made possible with assistance from Hakodo DY Music and Picture, the distributor of Eternally Younger Than Those Idiots. In particular, Miss Shibata Atsumi. Thank you for her assistance. Next, um, housekeeping matters. Today's event will be recorded as we are using webinar function, your name will not be viewable by other attendees. However, I strongly recommend you to keep your audio and video muted throughout, just in case. If you have any questions for the panelists, please use the Q&A function to send in your question at any time. Remember that attendees' questions may be seen by everyone else so that yeah, you, that you can avoid a particular question placed by another person which you would like to answer or if it's the same as yours. Simply click the thumb up icon next to the question you wish to vote. Unfortunately, due to the time restrictions, we may not be able to pick up all of the questions you ask, so my apologies in advance. Lastly, as always, we will send, send you online questionnaire, so please spare a short moment to complete it for our future event. That's all from me. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the, today's uh, conversation event. Now I would like to hand it over to uh, Irene uh, Yoshino Kantoku and then Tsumura Sensei. Um, uh, over to you. Um, Tsumura Sensei Yoshino Kantoku will be um, uh, translated by Bethan Jones. Thank you so much. Over to you. Oh, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Hello everyone and welcome to this special event, Young Minds in Japan. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today. As Junko was saying, this was one of my favorite films um, this year in the Japan Foundation Turin Film Program and it's a great pleasure to be here. It's one of those films that is extremely moving and stays with you for days and you wake up thinking about the characters of the film. So I'm very happy to welcome today uh, director Yoshino Ryohe, the director of Eternally Younger Than This Idiots. Um, good evening, Yoshino Kantoku. Hi, 
。どうもこんばんは。あ、イギリスはお昼ですか今。こっちはお昼です。<笑> Good evening. Although I think it's lunchtime in the UK right now. And we also have. はい。And we also have another very special guest, the writer of the novel in which the film was based,、uh, writer Tsumura Kikuko.、Uh, good evening,、uh, Tsumura Sensei. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you very much to both of you for coming today.、Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic conversation. We will be discussing your work and also the process of adapting a novel to, to a film, and, and also thinking, as Junko was saying, about issues、uh, on contemporary Japanese、uh, youth. But、uh, before we start and to kind of warm up and get a bit into the feeling of the film, I would like to, to share with you the, the trailer. ともあれ彼女は生き延びた太陽に乾き風呂に汚れながらひなぎさんは生きて帰ってきた Thank you. And for those who didn't get a chance to watch the film, Yoshino Kantoku, would you mind、uh, summarizing the, the story of this film? はいえー、とこの映画の主人公は、えー、と堀貝という、まあ、東京に住む大学生の女性です。えーとまあ、半年後に、えー、就,就職が決まっているんですけれどもその就職先っていうのが持続志士という、えー、仕事に就くことに決まっています。でえー、その彼女がですねあの、まあちょっとチャランポランな性格と言いますか、あのすごく、えー、そういう性格なので、果たして卒業してから自分が児童福祉士とちゃんとやっていけるかっていうのに対してすごく、えー、不安に思っている、もしかしたらできないんじゃないかと。っていう中で、そう落ち込んでいる中で、えー、猪木さんっていう友人と偶然知り合いになって彼女の関係であるとか、えー、先の友達との関係であるとか、えー、あとは友人の死なんかがあってですね、えー、自分がどういうふうに社会と向き合っていけば人と付き合っていけばいいのかっていうことを、えー、心の中で決めていくっていうような映画になっています。The protagonist of the film is a, a student at university in Tokyo called Horigai.、Uh, she has found a job for when she graduates due to start in six months, and she's going to work as a child welfare worker.、Um, she's quite a laid back character,、um, and so she's actually worried if she will be able to, if she'll make it as a child welfare worker when she graduates.、Um, and so she's a bit down about this,、uh, and she meets、uh, a girl called Inogi. Uh, and then the film goes on to depict her relationship with Inogi and with her other friends,、um, one of whom、um, actually uh, uh, dies. And then、um, her, her sort of finding her way through her relationship with her friends and, the, and society around her. Great. Yes, it's, it's such a powerful film because it, it connects so many different themes in, in a very relatable way. And, and this novel, as we were saying, was written by、uh, Tsumura Sensei, who, who has been writing since childhood. But this is a, precisely the novel, the first novel that got published. 
And an eternally younger than those Egypts won in 2005 the prestigious pr prize of Osamu Dasai. And uh, I just wanted to ask you, Tsumuna Sensei, what triggered you to, to write this novel? And uh, what was the, the central idea or theme that you wanted to convey? はい、well, I wanted to enter the Desire Osamu Prize uh, competition, and to do that, I needed to write a full length novel. And at the time, the most important topics for me were sexual violence and violence toward children. So I wanted to write a novel along those themes. Yeah, なぜその性暴力という but I wanted to show that sexual violence is, is really part of every, it can be part of everyday life and it doesn't, it's not always obvious, which is why I didn't bring it to the fore immediately in the novel, but it doesn't come really come to light until the, the second half. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's really well built into the story in a way, as are you saying that it's, very common characters with uh, a very everyday life that doesn't seem to have anything special but you start uh, the the characters start revealing their issues and their their traumas and it gradually comes up uh and and that's very interesting i i, I read that actually the original title of the novel was man ita in in katakana so I, I guess that means like uh, a person who eats human beings. And is this related to this idea of sexual violence and children violence? So this is the that's right it, it's man-eater in a sense of eating people and i wanted to show that these these eaters of people are people that horigai is probably going to have to deal with with for the rest of her life and i was also surprised to to read in the in the program notes that you kindly wrote for the japan foundation for accompanying the the screening of the film that you actually wrote this novel in in three months while having a full-time job uh so i wanted to ask you a bit about the process of of writing the novel itself how it went or you're an extremely prolific writer you have more than 20 books published already so i was wondering if, if you keep with that pace for this for this particular story for eternally younger than those idiots um i did spend a long time mulling the idea over i spent about three months um playing with the idea uh, and then 
came, then came up with the plot that, that would be a, a plot for a full length novel. And then, and then I spent about three months writing. It's very impressive. <laughs> uh, and, and now I wanted to ask Yoshino Kantoku. So this is, this is your fourth film. And in all previous films, you've also written the script and until eternally younger than those idiots, you were also doing the editing of, of the films. But this, I believe, is the first time you're making an adaptation from a novel. So I wanted to ask you, where did the idea came from? And, and also what attracted you to the work of uh, Tsumura Sensei and this novel in particular? Right. <laughs> ま、この、つむら先生の、え、大学生だし、登場人物もほとんど大学生なんですけれども、この小説はなんかそういうところじゃなくて、もっと人間と人と人とっていうのが男女関係なくすごく根源的にどういうふうにつながっていくのっていう話だったんで、そこにすごく魅力を感じたのがまず一点です。When I read uh, Tsumura-san's novel, obviously it's about university students, and usually when you have a Japanese film or TV series or novel featuring young people, it tends to be about love and the story revolves around how various um, issues are resolved around a love story. But this novel was different. Um, it, it dealt more with the, fundam the human relationships, relationships between people at a more fundamental level, um, be they male or female, and that I found um, very attractive.先ほどの人は生きていかなきゃいけないっていうような and then, as Tamura-san mentioned, you have these themes of child abuse and of um, youth suicide. And this novel shows those as part of, of reality and part of a reality that, that we have to live with. Um, normally, if you have themes like that of child abuse, of suicide in a story, they're very much the focus of the story. But with this, they're, they're part of, of life. Um, and that was something, again, that, uh, that appealed to me. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I think your film also reflects that very well, that this kind of dramatic, um, exaggerated climax is, is played down. And, but it, it does really convey, because of that precisely, this feeling of, of early adulthood, when you're starting to face problems and, and experiences that you didn't think that will happen to you or that you felt like something that is always far away. And, and, and that sense of also um, being bewildered by the, by the experience itself, I think it's very well um, expressed in, in, in the film. And, and, and I think for, for Tsumura Sensei, is, is this the first time your novel has been, a novel of yours has been adapted to a film? Because I was curious to know if you had any kind of requirements or conditions that you put for Yoshino, like you cannot <laughs> delete this part or things like that. Hi, する 
あの絶対に映画の中に出てくるあの子供への暴力女の子への暴力っていうものを戦場的に書かないでほしいっていうのがあってであのその部分に関しては撮影を終えてからあの吉野監督からこういうふうになりましたっていう形でその部分だけ見せていただきました。I left the, the script and the casting uh, up to Yoshino Kantoku, uh, up to the director. Uh, there was one thing that I did say, and that was that the, the violence towards the young girl uh, that happens in the film, that, I, that, that, that must not be sensational. It mustn't be shock horror. Um, and so that part uh, he did show to me um, after, after he filmed it. I, I, I think that that's, that's very, very well shown as well in, in the film, definitely. That is it, the same with the suicide and the other um, victim of child abuse, that is the, of, of neglect, that it's shown in a way that feels very real and direct, straightforward, but at the same time, it's not sensationalist. But, and, and I was wondering how you felt, you know, this world that you have created in your mind through, and, and then putting to words through months of work, suddenly watching it on the screen with, you know, actors that you know, real life people with specific faces. How did it feel? How did you feel when you watched the film for the first time? Mm. It was... It was un unbelievable, really, and I, f I still feel that way about it. And 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 Yoshino, so you you Yoshino Kantoku, you received this condition from from Tsumura Sensei, but he she gave you quite a lot of freedom to how to um, work on the adaptation. And of course, an adaptation always has to entail some kind of variation or novelty. But what did you think should remain? What what was the What's the purpose for you of adapting a novel to the film? えっとですね、まあ、えっと、原作通りに、えっと、映画化、映像化するっていうのは、やっぱり、えー、なんか、それも面白くないと思うんですよね。まあ、僕じゃなくていいじゃんって思っちゃうので。えっと、そうですね、まあ、今回の作品は、えー、原作だとどうしても、えー、堀貝っていう主人公を中心に、えー、描かれて堀貝の視点からずっと描かれているので、えー、なるべく、えー、映画化する際にはこう他のキャラクターたちっていうのの視点も入れてちょっと群像劇っぽくして映画化として。成り立たせようっていう気持ちありました。Well, I think I don't think there's any point taking a novel and turning it into a film exactly as it is. I think anyone could do that. It, I, it doesn't need to be me doing that. What I wanted to do was to take the novel where it's very much written from Horigai's point of view and to um to to try to kind of look at the story from some of the other characters points of view so it's more of an ensemble piece i think that is also partially the, the strength of the film that um the secondary characters don't feel like mere accessories to move the plot forward or to assist the protagonist but they actually feel very profound and and, and very real and and you kind of find yourself thinking what they did afterwards or how they felt before or things like that like for example with the suicide of Homina's character of course so um also with the secondary characters but with the protagonist as well I wanted to ask if you could tell us a bit more about the process how you built the characters profile and how you work with actors uh, around this そうですね、まあ,あのおっしゃっていただいた通りに何かこの映画、まあ、群像劇っぽくしたいっていう風な話をしたんですけれども要は
あの堀口っていう主人公を際立たせて、えー、ピックアップしないで他のキャラクターと同列に扱ってただたまたま主人公の視点として堀貝が偶然何か、えー、ダーツの矢で当たったみたいな感じでこう偶然そのこの人の視点で見ることになりましたこの世の中をっていうふうにまずしたいと思いました。Firstly, as I mentioned, I wanted it to be more of an ensemble piece. So I didn't want Horigai to really stand out as the protagonist. I wanted all the characters to be on the same level,、um, to be equally developed. But it, it just so happened that I'd thrown a, a dart and it happened to land on Horigai. And so that's, that's who we, we, we follow more. なのでですね、あのー、とにかく何か特別な才能とか特別な、えー、何か、えー、テーマを背負っているみたいなキャラクターっていうんじゃなくて、まあ、堀貝に関しても猪木に関しても他のキャラクターに関してもとにかくどれだけ普通なキャラクターにできるか、えー、本当にそこら辺の街を歩いてる人を引っ張って連れてきたみたいな雰囲気。と思ってとにかく役者とはこのキャラクターはどういうふうに今まで生きてきて何が好きで、えー、本当に今回のことですけど、えー、例えば、えー、音楽のプレイリストどんなのが入ってるんだろうねとかっていうことを話して一つ一つのキャラクターを、えー、画面には映らないんですけどそういうことをいろいろ話し合って。えーいかにその人が普通に生きているかというリアリティを役者さんと一緒にディスカッションして作ったっていう感じです。And I, so I didn't want the characters to be special. There, there was no particular reason for these characters,、um, be that Horigai or Inogi or any of the other characters. I wanted them to be as ordinary as possible, as though I just brought in someone off the street. So I talked a lot with the actors about their characters and what sort of a life they've lived, what their, their likes are,、um, what's on their music playlist,、um, all of these things that you never get to see on screen. I had these conversations with the actors to, to build the characters and make them feel as real as possible. And, and I think that work shows that the idea that they. There's a real person behind that small character, even. Yeah. And, and, and going back to <clears throat> the, the, well, the, the connections that are made across different themes, I, I think we've already mentioned how gender and sexuality is very important in, in the story. So I wanted to ask Tsumura Sensei.、Uh, I remember reading in the program notes that you mentioned that one thing that you really liked was the idea that. Um, characters were themselves, regardless of their gender. The gender didn't determine how they talk to someone or how they act in front of different people. So I wanted to ask you about、uh, how did that w o r k in the in the book and whether you, 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 you felt this as reflecting changes that are happening in Japanese society or rather as you hope. Young people can feel、uh, confidence about their gender, about their sexual identity. If it was more of a, an ideal, because I, I find the characters are very self aware of, the, of, of what is expected from them, or what are the typical or the attractive type of、uh, behaviors according to men and women,、uh, but at the same time, they manage to be themselves and to connect with others in a very natural way. あ、わかった。しゃべります。えっ、ー、と、うん、小説を書いたのは2004年で、で、あのー、当時、こうなれば、こういう形で、その、自分の性に対して、自分の性別に対して、抑圧的でない状態になればいいなっていうのがあって、で、あのー、やっぱり当時、まだ、えっと、2004年なんで、だいぶ前ですよね。今から
発売前とかかな。すごく前に書いたので、だから、その長い間でかなりその状況は変わった、性別を取り巻く状況は変わったと思います。Well, I, I wrote this in 2004,、uh, and at the time, I think I thought it would be nice if there was less pressure surrounding sexuality and gender. And, but, but it was 2004, that was a long time ago, it was like eight, 18 or so years ago, and a lot has changed since then. あの普通のテレビドラマとかでも取り上げられるようになりましたで2004年の時点ではまだそういう状況ではなかったと思いますだからあの自分がこうなってほしいなっていうふうに社会はちょっとずつですがあの日本社会は進んできたんじゃないかというふうに思います。Um, nowadays, that's something that you see in, in Japanese TV dramas.、Um, back then, you didn't. So, I think that I was writing my hope for the future, and I think that Japanese society is moving little by little in that direction. I think it's fantastic the way that they're not tied to any kind of, of labels or categories, and that it's, it's more of kind of a fluid experience、uh, of, of different. Yeah, behaviors or desires.、Uh, and that is very well、uh, conveyed, I think, in, in the story. And, and you just mentioned that,、um, thankfully,、uh, the, the representation and the visibility of LGBT communities in Japan is, is increasing and being a bit more, more normalized. And I, I was just remembering that Sakuma Yui, the, the actor that、um, performs Hori Gai. Was actually also star in, in Trans- Transit Girls, the, the TV drama about two、um, lesbian、uh, Roman, romantic s t o r y that was, well, it was、uh, praised by some and criticized by others for its actually for its depiction of, of lesbian love.、Uh, but I wanted to ask、um, Yoshino Kantoku. Uh, about the casting, actually, and, and why did you choose Sakuma Yui and for Horigai and now for、um, what's her name? Inogi, Inogi san. So, this is the book of Sakuma Yui, the Transit Girl, the Tetta, the Casting of the Kake, the Tata, 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 ホリガイがデズビアンだったのかっていうところも果たしてそういうふうにくくれるのかなっていうふうな形にしたいと思っていました。一回ここで切ります。サクマユイ being in Transit Girls really had nothing to do with my casting of her for this film. It's true that サクマ's character ホリガイ and now's character イノギ do have a physical relationship in the film, but I didn't want to pigeonhole her、uh, and say that, right, h o l y Guy is lesbian. Yes, and I think、oh. that's, that's what I meant. Oh, sorry, sorry, Ben. えっとまあ、なんかなのでホリガイとイノギっていう2人の関係はまあ正直いろいろ日本もそういうジェンダーとかの話に関していろいろ進んできた部分はあるんですけどやっぱり全然進んでいない価値観が全くアップデートされてないっていうところもまだ全然あるのであの男はこういうふうにあらねばならないとか。女性らしさってなんだろうみたいなところで、えー、そういう価値観はまだあるのでなんか掘りがいっていうのもやっぱりそういうこういうふうにいなきゃいけないとか女だったらこういうふうにしなきゃいけないとこに対してちょっとあのしんど抑圧的なそれがプレッシャーになっちゃうような、えー、キャラクターだろうなと思うんですよね。なのでこう
、イノギとホリガイがいるときっていうのは、そういう役割を、えー、取っ払った関係っていうか、えーうん、本当にそういう性別とかこの年齢だからこれをしなきゃいけないこういう考え仕草をしなきゃいけないっていうところを全部取っ払って仲良くできる相手っていうのが猪木さんだったからすごく心の根っこのところでつながれたっていうふうな、えー、関係にしたかったですね。うんはい I think... Attitudes towards gender in Japan have, have come on、um, in a way, but there are still some things that haven't changed.、Um, the ideas around how men must be and how, what femininity means, what, what a woman should be like. And I wanted, I thought that this character, Horigai, would be someone who felt under pressure、um, to, to be. A certain way because, because she is a woman.、Um, but the relationship that I wanted to give, to, to, to portray between Horigai and Inogi is one that goes beyond those traditional gender roles.、Um, in Horigai,、uh, in, in Inogi, Horigai finds someone where she can be herself. She doesn't feel that pressure to be a certain way because she is a certain gender or a certain age. She can go beyond that and they can both be themselves,、um, which is what leads to such a, a deep connection between them. Yes, I, I think the film films very empowering precisely because it is not、um, disavowing that reality, that pressure that the characters, all of them in different ways, feel. But they still manage to find their own ways to do things, or as you said, find the person with which they can connect in a, in a very honest way. And, and, and that's great. And certainly, friendship and, and romance or desire is part of the themes of the film. But we also, as we were saying, is, is the passage to adulthood, issues of self confidence.、Um, Violence and, and abuse of, of children and, and women. And all, this, all these themes are particularly relevant for young people, right? In this moment, that, that you're officially you're an adult, but you're still trying to figure out what that exactly means. So I wanted to ask、um, Tsumura sensei, what, what do you think are the major challenges or concerns? Of young people in, in Japan today. And、uh, you were mentioning before that, in terms of gender and sexuality, you, you think things have changed、uh, to a certain extent in this last 16, 17 years since you wrote the novel. But do you think other concerns of, of Japanese youth, in terms of personal issues or financial issues or things like that, have also changed? Or do you think they remain the same? If you could talk a bit about that. ですね、あの若い人たちに関しては、まあ、私,私ぐらいの年齢の人間も関係してくるんですけれども賃金がお給料がこの十数年上がってないっていうのが私は多分20代の時に28か28歳か27歳の時にリーマンショックがありまして。でそんな時から賃金が上がってないっていうのを、まあ、耳にすると、もう怖いなっていうふうに思います。もう,もう若い人たちがかわいそうで仕方がないです、その話を聞くと。Um, well, for young people, and, and even people my age, I think one of the big things is that pay hasn't gone up for the last. Over a decade.、Um, when I was 27, 28, we had the financial crisis, and it just pay hasn't really gone up since then. And I think that's a frightening thing for young people today.、Mm. Yeah, I think all this、um, pressure of looking for a job and complying to the structures of corporations and the hierarchies, I think it. It kind of made more sense as a personal sacrifice when you knew you were going to get. A job, you know, a permanent position that your salary was going to raise. But when all the economic and stability is not there anymore, then I think more people are thinking, 
why why should I go through all of this? Um, Yoshino Kantoku, what do you think? Do you think this is also one of the major concerns of Japanese youth, or would you also add some other issues? So this, え、well, when I was making this film, I had some university students uh, working with me as interns and they they had a really good work ethic. They had a really good vision for the for their future. And I think that there are probably more people like that, young people like that now than when I was younger. But, uh, and I'll carry on now. Hi. Hi. <laughs> 母校の映画の学校でたまにこう非常勤で生徒を教えたりしてるんですけども、なんかすごく僕らが大学生だった頃の その原因っていうのはさっき言った津村先生が言ってっていうような考えを持った若者が多いのかなっていう気はします。I occasionally go back and teach at the film school where I studied. And it strikes me that compared to 20 or so years ago when I was there, young people nowadays tend to think that they only get one chance. Um and there there may be economic reasons for that like Tsumura-san was saying, but they they seem to think that if they mess up, that's it their life is over and there are no second chances. Um, so in a sense, I think they are much more cautious nowadays and it's much harder for them to, to make mistakes. この恐怖というかあれなんですけれども、also, and I think this is, is to do with the, the way we use the internet now, um, they have a sense that once they've said something, it's out there um, and they can't take it back. Um, it's it's a, a kind of a fear that they have if they, if they say something wrong there's no chance to take it back. Whereas back in the day, if, I, if I'd said something wrong, I could take it back. I could say, sorry, that was wrong um, and apologize. But now once you've said it, it's out there. And I, and I feel that they have that, that feeling in everyday conversations as well, which I, I think must be stifling. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think um, all these uh, ideas that you're mentioning, both of you, the, the economic pressure, but also, um, a social pressure and, and the internet and mm, I think it must also be related to the the, the cases of suicide and, and child neglect or abuse and, and this kind of dysfunctional um, domesticity or private life in a way and and I was wondering if if you've heard from the audiences of the book 
and of the film, if some people have said, you know, um, thank you, this felt really empowering, or I could really relate to the way you've depicted these issues. Um, I don't know, what well, have you heard from the audiences? はい、あのまあ僕の映画の方はやっぱりその僕の方にツイッターのダイレクトメッセージとかであの若い男の子がずっと死にたいって思ってたんだけどまあこの映画を見てあのちょっとその思いがあの薄くなりましたとかちょっと気持ちが楽になりましたとかっていうようなえメッセージいただいていて。なんか僕は映画ってそこまでなんかこう人の人生変えるようなえ力があるのかってちょっと疑わっていた部分とかもあるんですけどなんかそういうのを直にもらったりするとあなんか本当になんか作ってよかったなっていう思いがありますね。はい Well, with regards to the film, I, I received a Twitter DM from a young man who said that he had been wanting to die,、um, but that when he saw the film, that feeling eased、uh, a bit.、Um, and I'd always doubted really that film really had the power to change lives. But when I actually received something like that,、uh, it made me very glad that I made this film.、Mm -hmm. And what about you, Tumura Sensei? Because as, I, as you were saying, 17 years ago, this kind of way of speaking of these issues was even more rare, I think. その昔の自分であったりとかでそれが今も人に読まれてるということがまず信じられないんですけれどもでも今もその十何本当に十数年経った後もこの小説に関してはあのいろんなご感想をいただい,いただきますやっぱりそれはその吉野監督がその若い男の子からもらったような感想を私の方にも寄せられることがあってあの嬉しく思いますし不思議にも思います。Well, when I wrote this, I wrote it to enter the competition、um, and I wasn't even thinking about it being published as a novel. I was writing it for myself, I was writing it for my younger self maybe.、Um, And I, I can't believe that people are, are still reading it today. And it's over a, a decade later, but I, I do still get um, people um, sharing, their, sharing their thoughts on the book with me. And I, I have received、um, messages like the one that, that、uh, Director Yoshino received from the young man,、um, which makes me very happy. And I also find it very strange. Great. I, I do believe that films and books can change the, the, the lives of individuals and maybe trigger you know, important conversations in, in society. And, and I think this book and this film is certainly one that has that potential. So we've got some questions、uh, in the QA box, and I would like to open it now to the audience.、Um, So, we have a question from Nick A that for Yoshino Kantoku, and it says During the creation of the movie, what were the difficulties you encountered in attempting to capture not only the dialogues and the characterization of the protagonist, but also the social nuances crucial to the context and overall takeaway from the story? So, I think this question relates to the process of, of adaptation and, and how you approach the, the, the social context that you say it's so portrayed in the novel, I believe. Hi, so this is a number of that. さっきも言った通り、こう、なんだろう、いろいろ児童虐待であったり、こう
ある意味ジェンダーとかそういうある意味社会的な問題っていうものは散りばめてはいるんですけれどもあまりそこがこう物語の中心には見えるようにはしないでおこうっていうのはやっぱり気をつけましたし逆にそういうのってこう入れておくとそっちばっかり目がいっちゃってそっちがテーマになっちゃうっていうことにならないようにえ逆に気をつけましたでここで一回切ります。Well, as I mentioned, when you have these kinds of themes throughout a film like child abuse, gender,、um, social, various social issues, they tend to become the focus of the story. And I didn't want them to appear that way. I wanted to try to avoid that and, and to avoid them being obvious themes that everyone would, would, would hone in on. でえっとまあ、この小説を一番最初に読んだ時読み終わった時に僕が思ったことはあこの小説っていうのは本当に本当に辛くてしんどくても声を上げない人たちの、えー、物語なんだなっていうふうに思ったのでとにかく、えーまあ、それは僕が読んだ。ただの一個人の感想ではあるんですけど、僕が映画にするんだったら、もうとにかくこの声をどんなにしんどくても声を上げられなくて、なんか声を上げないことでこの苦しみがないことにされてしまうような人たちの話っていうのは、軸をぶらさずにやろうっていうふうに気をつけました。When I first read the novel, after I finished reading it, I, I thought That this was a novel about people who, however hard things are for them, however much they may be suffering, they don't say anything. And that's just, that was just my personal take on it. But I thought if I, want, if I was going to make this into a film, that was what I wanted to focus on. These characters who may be suffering,、um, who may be having a really hard time, but they can't, they don't speak out. And as a result of that, it looks like there's nothing wrong.、Mm-hmm. I think it's also great how the film also pays attention to this responsibility of others in realizing that kind of feeling in someone that is close to you. I, I love the, the sentence that Horigai says at some point that how can I help the pain of someone if I'm not able to look straight into it?、Uh, and, and it's so true how we. Because of selfishness, because we're too busy, because we don't just realize it, or the other people are performing very well, we don't realize that someone is suffering by our side. And, and, and that was a very powerful message for me as well.、Um, we have now so another question for, from Monica to both, both of you. So perhaps Tamura sensei could start with this one.、Uh, Monica asks In creating the stories, Did the authors find it more useful to use their own past experience or to consult young people for research or to rely on the imagination? Yes, I think it's a good thing to do. 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 大体それが2割ぐらいですね。で、残りの8割ぐらいに関してはもうほぼ自分の想像で作りました。I would say there, is some, there are some things in there that I saw, heard, witnessed for myself, about 20%, I would say, and then the remaining 80% is, is imagination. And what about you, Yoshino Kantoku? はい、僕も津村先生の原作を読んだ時に本当にあの僕もこの作品に出てくるような出来事と今までの経験であの同じような経験したことがあったりあとまあずっと仲良かった女の子の友達が、えーまあ、実はそういう性被害に昔あった。会ってたことがあるっていうことをずっと僕は知らずにずっと友達でいたりとかっていうことがあったりしてあのなもしかしていろんなあ一回ここで切ります。Mm. Well, when I read the book, 
I, I realized that there were things in the book that I had experienced um, or people around me had experienced. There was a, a close female friend of mine who mm. turns out had been assaulted, but I, I never knew that. Hi. Hi. の、あの、気づけなかったとしてもすごく大事なことだと思いますので、この映画で描きました。And this friend of mine, you know, I used to play with her. Um we used to hang out and it was just everything was completely normal. I think there was a lot that I missed. Um but I think it's not, I think it's impossible to notice some things because as we see in the film, people hide them. Um, but regardless of whether we notice for ourselves or not, I think it's important to have the imagination to try and imagine what someone has been through um, and the pain that they feel, um, which is why I, I wanted to show that in the film. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Sam. This is for director Yoshino. And he says, uh, I already watched the film twice in cinema and I really love this movie, which I believe to be the best in my list this year. My question is related to the two female characters. I observed that Horigai and Inogi are both sort of loners. Who, who have been hurt deeply in their childhood. I think this film tries to encourage this group of people to live positively and help others, which is a moving topic. And, and I think uh, Yoshino Kantoko has also talked that this was the, the, the people towards the, the film is made. Uh, Sam says, my question is, what do you think of a marginalized person in the society and what you wish to say to them using this film? Thank you. え、あ、えっと、2回もご覧いただいて本当にありがとうございます。えっと、そうですね。あの、ま、僕も僕自身も正直世の中にそんなうまくな馴染めないというか、特に映像業界とか僕はずっと向いてない向いてない言われていたけ
でそういう人のことを遠くに離れててもあの人元気かなって思うことっていうのがなんか僕はなんか人間関係の中ですごく希望であったり大事なことなのかなっていうふうに思いました。はい。But I, I, I gradually realized that life isn't all bad.、Um, and that if I approached people one to one, that there were people, there were a lot of people that I could get along with.、Um, that's something that I discovered as I grew up.、Um, because I think I'd always tended to look at people. As part of a group, I would see them for all the things that they belong to rather than for them. And when I started looking at them as a person, I realized that actually there's probably one in every hundred people that I can really get along with.、Um, and then I realized that when I, even when I was apart from those people, I would find myself hoping that they were well, wondering how they were doing.、Um, and that gave me hope for relationships. And、um, I think. It's an important thing. I think it's very interesting to think how different also it can be for Tsumura sensei, who you, you were saying that you basically wrote this for yourself and for your younger self.、Uh, whereas Yoshino kind of already had the novel and he was thinking, you know, first of what kind of audience. Are going to watch this film and what do I want to tell them?、Uh, so it's very interesting to see that, that difference as well. And we have one, one last question in the QA box from Luna, who also highlights the, the kind of delicate and subtle built up and, and the way that both the book and the film deal with all these、uh, complex issues. And, and Luna is asking about. The promotion of, of, of the film, but I would like to also know about the book. So, the, these are difficult subjects, dark subjects, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of hope in, in this story. So, how, how was the promotion、um, done? What was kind of the, how, how were you promoting、uh, or the message used to promote this story? Perhaps,、um, Tsumura sensei, if you would like to go first. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Um, and the strategy was to, to let people think that, let them think it's a lighthearted film. And then when they see it, it actually is, is uh, much darker and more serious. That's interesting because that's very much what Samura Sensei was saying about not bringing the, the, the violence and the trauma at the beginning, but let her, you know, get the reader into the story and then it, it, it emerged uh, into the story. So that's, that's very interesting, this idea of, of, I don't know if it's shocking. It's also what we were talking, I think, about you don't see those things at first. They're not just there on your face, or maybe they are, but you just still don't see them, right? And, and it takes some time to let, um, see through them. Um, so uh, we still have some questions, but I, I'm, and I had many, many questions that I wanted to ask you, but we're running out of time. Um, I just wanted to say again, thank you so much to both of you. It's been fascinating talking to you about your work and, and also about, um, youth in Japan nowadays. And, and I think that there's, yeah, there are a lot of uh, issues that are very concerning, but there's also hope uh, as there is in, in this story. And thank you again for such a beautiful book, such a beautiful film. I do think it can change uh, lives or perceptions of, of people. So I would like to now uh, pass it on again to, to Junko Sensei. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm not sensei, you know, so <laughs> I'm just so old. I realize it. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was really fun, yeah, interesting um, discussion. Um, I just know that so many times. So um, I was really into this conversation as much as I was into the film itself. That those people who haven't seen the film, I'm sorry about that. But this film is just has a full of surprises. When I watched the screener for us first time in choosing which title I should actually choose for that Saturday film program, I didn't have any expectation, anything from this. But as I watched it, I said, what? What? For kind of, what? What kind of sort of surprises? And uh, it's just, to be honest, Yoshino Kantaku, that's um, a synopsis or marketing didn't actually say that anything about the content, to be honest, in my opinion, it's kind of disguise. But you really need to watch it. You really need to watch it to feel how good you know film is. It's not like you, you just you know go there in the cinema, no expectation, and you come up to the cinema, say, oh my god, that kind of thing. I remember in in, in Irene when you came up from the cinema, you were kind of tears, you know, in tears. So this is just, you know, that's kind of impression lurking around for many days. I still feel thinking about it really become really emotional. Um, just actors of a really great direction was really great. I think that based on the you know, storyline is very great. So it's kind of a nice combination between that good storyline that's thanks to, you know, uh, Tsumura Sensei and also good filmmaking, thanks to that uh, director, Yoshino. So that was really good achievement result. So I'm very glad that today, I, uh, we could have that uh, conversation, invited both, you know, original author and then director. So thank you so much for joining us. And the thank you also goes to Irene. Your, your question was fantastic. And they also, you know, of course, thank all of you who join us today, um, watching, you know, uh, this conversation. I really appreci appreciate that when you have a very busy time. And the thanks also goes to Bethan, who did that wonderful translation. I hope this work um, will be shown somewhere in the UK and beyond. Um, unfortunately, that and as part of the Turing Film Program, it's over. But um, this is really, you know, a great film that I hope that uh, it's actually remained in the history of Japanese, Japanese cinema as one of the greatest films. So, um, Ellie, uh, do you have any slides for next um, talk? Yes. Next time we turn to the UK professionals. Uh, on next in a week, 29th, we invited that uh, four uh, programmers or directors of the Japanese Film Festival in the UK to talk about 
that the scene behind the organizing film festival or on Japan in the UK. So if you are interested in how that program mean is done or organization is done, just join us uh, for this talk next week. Um, you can see, you can if you scan that uh, this QR code, you can get that uh, information on how to book this event. And then, of course, uh, do you have any any other slides, um, Eddie? That's it. Yes. If you want to hear uh, from us about future events, um, please join us on the e in e bulletin uh, by clicking this website. So we will send you that information what's happening next time. So that's all from me. Um, surprising in the UK is a glorious weather. It's just really strange. But um, uh, if you are in the UK, uh, enjoy that um, springy sort of weather. Uh, I don't know how long it lasts. Um, enjoy that afternoon. And then if you are in Japan, have a good, you know, good night in the evening. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye bye.